Recommendation systems are playing an important role in many applications, from recommending videos in YouTube and Netflix to recommending hashtags in LinkedIn and Instagram. Recommendation system in industrial settings usually recasted as a classification problem. So we want to recommend a product or a video, a content to a user, and we want to see whether they uh, they like it or not. So it can be as simple as that. Like the objective is just check whether a user likes the product or content or not. But sometimes there are multiple objectives and it's not just that easy to combine all those objectives together. Researchers at Google presented a solution for this multitask ranking system. They presented the paper called recommending what video to watch next a multitask ranking system at Rexis 2019. So in industrial settings, usually the recommendation system follows the two-stage pattern. Let's just focus on one, one application, YouTube. So YouTube has billions of videos and content, right? So if you want to actually use a very sophisticated deep neural network to rank all those billions of videos and show it to the user, that's not going to be very efficient and that takes a lot of time. I mean, people got crazy. Nobody's going to use YouTube. So instead, they follow the two stage pattern. So basically, from the billions of videos corpus, they actually select some candidates. Basically, they narrow down their search space. They select some candidates. From 1 billion, they come up with, I don't know, like 500. And then they use a very sophisticated model to only apply, check those 500 candidates and rank the videos. And they usually do that in a funnel or layered based fashion it means that from the billions of videos they just first select 1 million of them and that can be just as simple as simple SQL query for example if we have an index table here and we have video just has been watched by the user we can just write a simple query that select 1 million videos from this corpus and then we can have logistic regression to narrow down even further and make they select 500,000 from the 1 million and we can have like a random file for example to again make it even narrower and at the end end up with 500 candidates the most relevant candidates to the video and the user like after selecting that can 500 candidates then the ranker can be a very sophisticated model it can quickly rank those 500 candidates and recommend it to the user. So this is the overall setting in industry. Let's clarify the problem. So given the current watched video and the context, context means what time of the day the user just watched this video, what day of the week, what day of the year, for example, these sort of things. So given current watched video, the context and these 500 candidates design a system that can rank those 500 candidates based on the following objectives. One, engagement objective. Engagement like click, like uh, watching the video. And the second objective is satisfaction. Satisfaction means liking the video, or rating the video. So let's talk about a scale. YouTube roughly has 2 billion monthly active users. Let's do some math. So 2 billion divided by 30 days means 66 million active users daily. Divided by 24 means 2 million active users hourly. Divided by 3600 means 700 active users per second. So we have to keep this in mind. Our system must be very efficient to process uh, 700 active users per second, but not just that, but more than that, because there are some peak times or, um, that the load goes even higher than that. Like the system must have a very low latency. Now let's see how Google folks tackled this problem. So one solution is that given the input features, the embedded features, and having some shared layers, and after that, we have two heads, one head for engagement task, the other head for satisfaction task. But as I mentioned, sometimes the tasks do not align with each other and sometimes they conflict. And having the shared layers between them might not be very helpful and sometimes might be actually even harmful 
to the end result. To resolve this issue, Google researchers propose to use mixture of experts. Mixture of experts are like a sub networks that are supposed to learn or become an expert on a specific part of the input information. In this example, the input features are from different modalities. Like we have video content, we have audio, we have title, which is text, and we have users information like user demographic. So there are different modalities from image, video to audio to text a mixture of experts are great in handling this multimodality so the hope is that each subnetwork becomes an expert on specific modalities now although it might not be very helpful to share all the information between them as I mentioned it might be harmful but sometimes uh, one experts information can help the other experts information and the, com the, the combination of their expertise can help the end result but how do we know which experts should share their knowledge. So answer to this is multi-gate. They said that okay we don't know which experts should share their knowledge to each other but let's let's learn it. Let the network to learn which expert should share the knowledge with, with what expert. As you can see here the output of expert 1 and the output of expert 2 goes to this gate for task 1 and this gate will decide whether these two experts should share their knowledge or not. Same for the task 2 tower. Here I mentioned we have two tasks but there are actually two categories, right? Engagement and satisfaction. But each of them has different basically different subtasks. For example, in engagement we can track of click click is an engagement and watch time. So for clicks binary we can predict whether a client is going to click on this video or not. So this is a classification problem. But watch time is a regression. We want to predict how long the user is going to watch this video. So it's a regression problem. For task two, satisfaction, again, we have a classification head that predict whether a user is going to like this video or not and a regression head which we are going to estimate the rating for this particular video. Let's look at the whole system. The inputs are the video that has been just watched query, the candidate video features, content, title, the upload time, uh, also the user information, the context information, the time, user profile, historical data, all this stuff. So they're going to be embedded to have a better smaller representation and after that they are fed to the shared layer and then mixture of experts with the gates and they predict the engagement objective here and satisfaction objective. Each of them has a different subtasks. For example, given a video and a candidate, they predict with what probability the user is going to engage, means click on that video and watch it. And we're also going to predict the satisfaction factors, like with what probability the user is going to like this video and the rate. So we predicted like four or more values for each video, but at the end of the day, we have have to come up with one single scholar score for each candidate video. They actually combine these outputs either using the weighted average or they can actually have another like a very small shallow network here to train to learn how to combine this information and come up with one scholar score. So after they have the score they calculate this score for all those 500 candidates and then they sort them based on the ranking score and suggest them or recommend them to the user. Now when the user starts in interacting with those commanded videos, they are going to collect those logs and use that information as the training data to retrain their system. But there's a problem here. So the problem here is, let's say you are you're on your web browser, you watch a video and now you have a bunch of recommendations, but you only see the, the first five recommendations in your in your screen. You can actually scroll down and to see more recommend, recommended videos, but it's more likely that you click on the first five recommended videos because they appeared on the first page. That doesn't mean that the video that's been recommended on the last page or all, if you scroll all the way down the video there might be something that you are interested in but you simply don't go that far to click on that and the video that you select on the first page does not necessarily mean that you like that video you click on that because it appeared in your face in the, in the first page so there's a bias there and if you want to collect the data to retrain your model it's going to introduce a big bias in your system like as you can see here it's very likely that user click on the first recommended video 
videos but not because it's relevant but solely because it's it's in the first recommendation or it's appearing in the first page how the researchers resolve this issue so they add another shallow tower here for removing this bias and this is how they do in the training phase here when user starts clicking on the recommended videos they check which position that video was so they include that position of the video uh, as an input feature this tower here so basically there's a position feature and maybe the device that the user is using because it's sometimes different screen sizes can can affect how users scroll up and down so but but the main idea the core idea is that they include the, the position of the recommended videos as an input during the training phase and they got the logit and they concat it with logits coming from the the big network that we saw our main recommendation system on the engagement part so here's the logit that they they got from a shallow tower and they concat it with the logit in the engagement objective part and why just engagement because position is going to affect the, whether a, a user is going to click or not so they include the, the position of the recommended video as one of the features when they want to predict the user engagement this is in the training phase but in the serving time in the inference time in production they remove this feature similar things have been proposed before for example sometimes math is much simpler in training time we want to predict the engagement probability given the position of the recommended video so we include this position in the in the training phase then in the serving time we assume that all the videos that we want to get the engagement we assume that they are all in position one and now let the network just predict the probability of engagement so now let's talk about the evaluation and metric so we have offline metrics and online metrics offline metrics when we are not in production environment and we are using like a historical data they use the under curve for classification and squared error for regression heads for online metric they monitor the engagement and satisfaction in production in an a b testing setup let's quickly look at the results so here are the youtube live experiment results results so having the like, shared layer with 3.7 million multiplication this column actually number of multiplications uh, represents the capacity of the model when we rep uh, replace the shared layer by mixture of expert we want to make sure that the capacity of the two two variations are the same so we can compare apple to apple so compare this shared bottom layer and compare it with just using four experts so it's increased the, the engagement and and satisfaction if we add more capacity to the shared layer and also add to the number of experts so both have like 6.1 million multiplications the same capacity again mixture of experts increase the results increase both engagement and satisfaction prediction so another experiment is on removing the position bias with the shallow network that they use for removing the position bias they actually improved the engagement metric with 0.24 percent okay that's it hope you enjoyed this video i put the link of this paper in the description so if you have any question feel free to ask in the comments if you find these kind of paper reviews useful please let me know in in the comments and also don't forget to subscribe that actually encourages me to produce more videos like this okay? stay safe see you next time